Okay, good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Let me know if you guys can hear my audio and see my screen in the chat box. Just give me a little why or a yes there, just indicating that it is working. I uh, hope everybody's having a good morning. Um, hopefully your trading's been going well. I'm looking forward to today's webinar um, and see if we can make some pips today. So that'd be awesome. Before we get into it, let me make sure I share a disclaimer. As always, I need to remind you about the risks involved in the market. You can lose all or more than your initial investment if you're not careful. Uh, this is a leveraged market. Uh, so be aware of that every time you take a trade. Okay. All right, guys. So there's not a lot of news. Um, well, actually, there's a little bit. So we had the CPI report came in a little higher with the pound last night. Um, not a lot of news with other pairs other than there is going to be a um, unemployment and GDP. Let's see, unemployment with the Aussie tonight. So I may um stay away from the aussie and the pound specifically um oh and the cad the cad had cpi report this morning and so did the pound so so pound cad and aussie will be those that i stay away from a little bit so anyway let's jump into this and see what we can find um so that means let's go to our favorites real quick so here's the euro frank not really not quite a setup um, right there. Let me see what else this guy, what else we have here. Okay, we're staying away from the cat. How about the Frank Yen? Not really. Uh, let's see. Hero cat. Oh, yeah, we're staying away from the cat. Um, Hero Yen. Not really. Not really there. Oh, let's go to the five minute. See what we can find here. This one, perhaps a little late to that one, but it's okay. Yeah, Euro dollar, not really anything on those ones. Let's see. So we're, what we're looking for is that break in the Bollinger Band, that upper break, right? Or lower break. See NZD Frank. Oh, this one just lined up. Um, kind of late to this one. Oh, that's frustrating. Dang it, that could have been a great trade. Well, it is a great trade. We're just a little late to it. Um, today might be similar to yesterday, where we just have to, um wait for an additional setup later. This one's not too bad. Let's see, this is the dollar franc. It's not quite setting up though, that's my issue. So I just don't quite have that, that set up. So I'm just just waiting to see if I can find because everything's a little slow this morning. And we also have a few pairs that are kind of off limits due to some news, right? But I'm thinking this dollar franc, if it gets another, you know, one more last push to the upside here, this will be a great option for a banker's close uh, this morning. So I'm, I'm going to keep that one close. In fact, I've got another chart over here. I'm just going to throw it up on a chart. Um, just so I can watch it while we're looking for some others. But yeah, let me scan some of these again. Um, again, I want to stay away from the Aussie because there's un unemployment news coming out with that tonight. And if we have to swing a trade, um, that's not going to be good. Uh, we're not going to have that luxury to swing it. So stay away from the Aussie this morning. Um, and then let's look at, and then CAD. We had, again, we had that news with the CAD. Yeah, CPI index came out. Um, so inflation and that same thing with the pound. So I'm kind of staying away from, I know the pound probably isn't that big of a deal at this point. Um, the actual came out just slightly higher than the forecast, which I think was kind of the expectation worldwide because 
we had our inflation report come out last week and it had basically the same thing, just slightly higher than the forecast. And so, you know, wouldn't that wouldn't be far too of too much of, of a surprise to see the pound do that as well. And it did. So um, so maybe the pound might be fine. If there's anyone that we want to push, I might be OK. Plus, that news is kind of getting old. Um, but nonetheless, it's just something to be aware of. But yeah, CAD and Aussie would be the two odd off limit currencies. All right, so I'm just continuing to look. Um, see what I can find. Here's that Euro franc again. This, this honestly, we could probably use this. Um, yeah, it's, we could use this one. Um, well, let me go back to the 15 minute chart or a 15 minute. I want to see if I can find any resistance. This is kind of a, oh yeah, we're, we're kind of at a, a, a lot of resistance up here and it could go a little higher than that, but I'm just going to draw this out. Old reliable. Yes, that I would say so. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, well, okay, well, it's between this guy and the dollar franc. Right? It's really not technically a setup, but so that's why if you're going to do this one, I'm going to probably take half a starter position, so a, a much smaller trade. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a much smaller trade. And, and then be ready and willing to add to the position if necessary, right? Because that's probably where we'll, where we'll be with this one. So, um, and this is basically a duplicate trade, um, the Euro franc uh, to the dollar franc. Um, the only difference is, you know, obviously you're using the Euro um, to short instead of the dollar. Um, doesn't make a huge difference because there's not a lot of news with either one. This one is more at a uh, several month high right now. In fact, that red line is the high, right? So if it, and which by the way, uh, there's a really good chance it could get there and actually go beyond that before we get our awesome move that we're waiting for. So that's why I'm saying take a, I only have three trades on, really small trade, right? Um, it's because really good chance this is going to go up to here. That's 10 pips away and maybe even beyond it um, before it comes down today. So just be ready for that. <clears throat> but yeah, coast is clear. No news. Really not a lot of news with this pair. Um, I didn't, I mean, I'll double check the other. So I like to check here on the main on Forex Factory, this is obviously the most important to check. And then you also wanna check when you're looking for news, uh, these latest stories, because sometimes there's stuff on here that comes up that wasn't planned, right? These are all forecasted. These are going to be released. These are speeches that are going to happen by notable people with these currencies and they are on the docket. Uh, so you wanna look at, these you want to you want to stay away from stuff that's got news within the next you know uh, twelve hours perhaps and anything that's had news within the last twelve to twenty four hours and then you know significant when I'm saying news like anything that's marked red you want to stay away from that kind of stuff and then um, uh, you want to look at latest stories because sometimes there's stuff here that. Um, um, Sometimes there's stuff here that, you know, um, you, we wasn't forecasted. It just kind of happens all of a sudden. So you have to be aware of these as well. Um, let's see, news hottest stories. Yeah, okay. This is all not a big deal. All right. So yeah, we've got a good trade. We've got a good trade to take. Um, now it's just going to be a matter of us being patient and building the position as we as we go along.
All right, since we know our levels here, I'm gonna jump down to a one minute chart. So I can watch this price action develop. And yeah, I'll add another one, maybe two trades. But yes, it is gearing up for another high. I can tell you right now, this is probably going to break up. You know, you've got this little flag right here caked into an uptrend. That is the multi-month high right there. So yes, it is going to hit that. Um, like, so take a small position now. So you're in it because it is a good trade, but like, yeah, we're going to see this is, I, I, I'm really confident that's going to make another high before we get the move down that we want. I've just, I've just seen this kind of move and you guys have seen this type of move before too. Like um, <clears throat> when the candy is that close, the market will get it. It'll take it, you know, it's not going to make it too easy for you and me to, to do, to uh, get that move that we want. Um, at least generally speaking, I don't think it's going to be that easy. All right, let's see. Um, oh yeah, I just wanted to remove. I'll just delete everything. This is actually an opportunity now that I think about it. Because we're at such highs in the market on this particular pair overall, this could be one of those types of trades where I think we'll want to keep a trade or two for, for like a day or two uh, to capture like a bigger swing like that, or maybe like this, maybe like this one perhaps which these are, you know, that's 30 pips, 34 pips. This one was 30. This guy was 50. Um, I would say that is definitely a possibility because of what highs we're at and the chance of a pullback that could last longer, I think is a lot more likely. Um, <clears throat> so keep that in mind today as we're closing trades, obviously we'll, close most of our trades when they hit the mid Bollinger band on the five minute. We'll take most of the profits or what profits we get today at that level. And then I do think we'll probably want to keep several trades uh, to ride uh, just for that chance of getting, you know, 30 to 50 pips on a trade, perhaps more. But yeah, it's going to be slow. Um, so far, so good, but it's going to be a little slow today just because, again, not a lot of news. And that's good. We, it really has been a game changer for me since I've been trading the banker. I've been trading the banker's close for more than a decade now. Um, like I've been trading this, not necessarily every day for a decade, but I've known about this phenomenon for over a decade. I've been trading it off and on and then full-time, obviously now trading this phenomenon um, for over a decade. And um, something I was going to say about it is when I added that personal rule of don't trade around news with the banker's close, it's a game changer, absolute game changer, because there were a lot of days where I would lose confidence in my trade because there was something else pushing the market that I wasn't aware of. Um, and so I would get caught in a bad trade um, that couldn't be fixed. Um, we can handle the manipulated days where, hey, there's no reason for the market to be up here. Um, there's no news causing this. You know, those types of days we can wait for our pullback like you've seen on Monday and you know Thursday or whatever that was. 
um, we can wait on those days. Um, but yes, um, but yeah, wait, waiting for currencies to not have news and stuff like that, a, a huge game changer, huge game changer for me. Okay, and just for fun, and since we don't have a big trade, I am interested in the prospect of a second trade today. Um, so while this is just sitting in a good spot for us, um, slightly in profit, I'm going to go look and see what else is available. I am interested in another trade today, if possible. This trade, I was really mad because had I been here maybe five minutes before the hour, I could have grabbed this one. Oh, man, that was 37 pips, honestly. Oh, that's frustrating. That's okay. But yeah, this one, if you here, just zoom in here so you can see when this guy started. Um, so yeah, like, the bottom was seven minutes before the the hour and that would have been just a, a boss trade to take 36 pips so it doesn't necessarily like you might ask well hey steve isn't the hour start right here and yeah that could you could start there and buy but like these this hour is kind of a general concept like you can trade just just outside of it if there's an opportunity because likely if that opportunity is available six minutes before the hour it'll be there in six minutes so go ahead and start a little early if you want and i'm just kind of mad i was showering so yeah my shower probably costed a lot of money today <laughs> so should have showered earlier um but um should have gotten to the computer earlier but yeah see that that trade just amazing absolutely amazing and it is just barely hitting the mid bollinger band now so yeah that 36 pips of opportunity really is a reality on that one so that's that's a little too bad but that's okay um okay euro dollar it's just sitting in the middle there's no news i mean i don't blame it there's really no opportunity on the euro dollar today so far um, if it obviously if it breaks up to here or comes down to here, there could be an end of our euro dollar opportunity, and that could be awesome. We haven't traded the euro dollar in a while, and that's kind of the original currency pair to trade the bankers close um, is the euro dollar. But it's all good. We're, it's all good. Hey, so far so good, um, Rodney. Here's my FTMO account. Um, I've already closed out a couple of these trades. I've just got four trades left on the FTMO um, on this short for the Euro Frank. I'm up just over a thousand dollars right now um, in the account. Um, so I'm a little bit behind in terms of my profits, but um, you know we're getting there. So. So I've been just, I've been, every time I take a trade over here uh, in Alveo, I take the same trade, you know, over in FTMO. But yeah, let's, let's actually, okay, let's see. I wanted to see, because th there will be another opportunity. I'm really surprised that this just decided to go down. In our, I mean, great, we'll take the money, but you can see why, it's so you can see why I say, man, I hope this trade goes against us first, right? Because that kind of gives us an opportunity to layer in a little bit more before it comes in our favor. Um, nonetheless, you know, 
we're doing we're doing fine but yeah sometimes i would like the trade to go against us just a little bit see oh and here's another one this is basically the same thing as the euro kiwi but now the kiwi frank just on the opposite side this guy lined up just a few minutes before the hour look at this right there that was the top right there 254 so that was six minutes before the class started and that would have been again same thing just perfect trade 16 pips on that one And again, I'm just scanning the markets to see if there's other opportunities coming up because I do do want to see if I can grab another trade today. Interestingly enough, this dollar franc has actually stayed up here. So I will keep it, we'll keep a close eye on this one because um, in fact, I'm gonna use one of my charts over here to watch that because if that creates a new high i'll probably i might i might jump into that one it also depends on if the euro franc creates another high again i don't think it would but but this dollar franc could be a good opportunity here's the five minute so yeah a break or a touch of that upper bollinger band would be um the precise opportunity all right let's go take a look while i while we wait for that, let's go take a look at this Euro franc. Well, we've hit the mid Bollinger band, right? So, I mean, that's technically time to close several trades here and we're up 31, 32 pips or so. Um, I'm just gonna close two of these. And I was up for, just for the record, I was up 48 pips to start the day because I traded the Tokyo close. Um, so anything past 48 pips would be um, our profit that we made together. I'm going to close one more and just leave the rest of these two. So that, that was kind of an easy, easy, easy trade. Um, and then we can leave the rest of these. Honestly, um, at this point, um, let's bring those stop losses to break even. And... Um, I'm gonna let these two ride and see what happens because we're kind of at the top on the Euro franc right now. So I'm gonna bring these stop losses to break even. And then, um, yeah, just kind of scatter these two where you think the most, you know, there's a good amount of uh, support right there, but I would like to try to see if I can grab something like that down there, that'd be a great, support to close that right there yeah um but yeah i want to see if i can find another trade today like i'm not done yet i just want to make a little more money this morning so i want to see if i can find something else um and it may take to, to until the end of the hour to find that other opportunity and that's okay But this is just working out quickly and fast. I, I am surprised. You just never know. You never know how quick this is going to happen. Sometimes it happens right away. Other times it takes us several hours. We've had a few. Obviously, you, you know we've had a few that took. Uh, um, we had to wait and sit on for um, like 12 hours. 
It was actually on this pair, by the way. Okay, so this guy just hit the bottom of his Bollinger Band on this Aussie Frank. Oh, that's right. We're not trading the Aussie though, sorry. I was like, that, that might be good, but we're not trading the Aussie. No, that one was just in the middle of the range, middle of the bands there. So no trade on the euro yen. Maybe I'll take a sec. If we can't find anything, and we'll just wait for a little bit longer to see if we can find another opportunity. Um, I am going to show you what I traded last night. This is the one I have the most grief over. I am so sad I didn't buy down here. <laughs> ah, frustrating. Early bird gets the worm, right? So I gotta, I, I need to be more disciplined to get to the computer a little bit earlier. Instead of just right at the top of the hour, I need to start looking for these, you know, 10 minutes before the class starts. happens on so many pairs like even even the pairs that are, aren't related to europe often have their own bankers close opportunities which is great it's awesome all right again we're staying away from the pounds jeez look how awesome that is Yep, still waiting. Nothing really lining up at the moment. This this dollar franc is he's staying up there, even though some of his counterparts are coming down, like the euro franc. So that's something to be aware of. There's a little bit more strength with the dollar franc franc here, but nonetheless, I think if it were to break and make a new high today, like if it broke above this right here, um could go could go up and make and meet that old high that's 14 15 pips away but this this could be a stellar opportunity um, to hold maybe carry over potentially we'll see <clears throat> but still not lining up. Everything else happened so quick today. We're just lucky and glad. I, I'd say happy that we still got that Euro franc opportunity. Um, let me show you yesterday's, what I traded at the Tokyo, um, the Tokyo close last night. I guess that's part of the reason why, um, obviously on time for the class, but a little bit slow to, to my own computer this morning just because I was up late trading the Tokyo close. But um, here it is. So let's see, we gotta go to 7 a.m. Here it is right there to 8 a.m., which is right here. So here, let me, let's do a one minute. It looks better on the one minute since we can do that, yeah. Okay, so here's the phenomenon, right? So this is the exact same thing we're doing right now, but just with Tokyo. So 7 a.m. GMT would be right here. And here's 8 a.m. GMT. Now this one had tons of opportunities. Um, this was the trade I got. So I started buying, you know, right around here and I kept buying down, buying down, buying down. And then I honestly got out when it did this. So um, 
I was happy and content with that return right there. Um, it was only 10 pips, but that was, that was awesome. It was great. Um, I didn't know it was going to pull one of these and go 20 pips um, in that hour, but still good. And then there was technically a second opportunity to sell right here. Like this is since, since it's making, hitting the upper Bollinger band on a five minute here, I'll jump to that. Um, it was touching or actually breaking through the mid Bollinger band right here on the five. So this would be a second opportunity. So you have an opportunity to buy at the beginning of the hour and then an opportunity to sell at the end of the hour. Um, basically 20 pips both ways. Um, I don't think you would have caught, I didn't catch 20 pips both ways, but I think 10 pips is absolutely on the table uh, each direction. But again, I went to bed as soon as I, I captured this first move right here at the beginning of the hour before in that banker's close window. That's, that's the opportunity I captured. And I'm happy, I'm happy with it. I mean, there's, and this, this happened to gosh dang nearly every currency pair. Like you can literally pull up here, let's just for kicks and giggles, you can pull up other currencies. I don't know, maybe the pound dollar, let's see how that did. Yeah, a little opportunity there. Um, I don't know, the dollar yen, how did that do? Yeah, came down, opportunity to buy. That's really cool. Actually, that buy was the low of the of the London session. So if you had bought there and held, um, you'd now be up from that low. Yeah, 47 pips. It's kind of cool to see those things. It's just stuff, you just observe these kind of things and you're like, hmm, I wonder if I were to do that. You know, it's again, it's one of the reasons why I'm swinging that Euro franc trade is, you know, hey, we might be at a, um, a high that could be, this could be the high for several days, maybe longer, who knows? Um, so I'd like to see if I can swing a trade out if possible. But yeah, so now we're just doing, just doing our London close, right? Soon our London close. This dollar yen could be a banker's close opportunity um, right here. I'm a little hesitant because it's not a European currency. Um, and it is one of my rules. So I'd hate to break, I'd hate to break that rule. Rules keep us safe, right? They keep us safe, they help us um, have a lot of confidence going into the trades that we do take. All right, again, staying away from the Aussie, about the Frank Yen and the opportunities here. So I'm just rescanning for opportunities right now. This would be an opportunity, but we're not trading the Aussie. Right. Not today, at least. Here's our trade. Old reliable, right? Euro Frank, just doing its thing. And we're, you know, largely out of that trade. We just have our two stragglers hanging out. Okay, this would be an opportunity on the Euro pound, but again, we're kind of staying away from the pound because there was some recent news last night on the pound inflation. So as much as it's tempting to want it, I think we need to stay away from it. And again, here's the, I hate looking at this because this was such a huge opportunity this morning that we didn't take. Uh, it's all right. Super frustrating. 
the Euro Kiwi, Euro Kiwi long trade. Okay, let's get to the pounds. Oh, can't trade the cat either. Well, we have 20 minutes or so, a little more, to see if another high, some one of these currencies wants to break out. I get the feeling that this dollar franc is just itching to do so. Just the way it's sitting up here, it really is giving me vibes of, you know, this will to break. I think it will. Um, I don't know if it'll do it in the next 25 minutes, though. Um, if it does, I think I'm all over this. I'm, I would be willing to uh, short this and tangle with this throughout the afternoon if needed to, but this would be, this would be a good one, I think, if we can get that break. Um, yeah, that, that would be awesome. So yeah, I have a chart over on this side too. I'm just keeping an eye on that one because this is definitely this would this would hit all the all the notes that we need to hit. Um is, is this trade right here, if we can get it. Um, okay. And then yeah, everything else, there was stuff lining up like the Euro pound is an awesome one. We love to trade the Euro pound, but you know, hey. It was an inflation report that came out recently. I'd rather, I mean, th this, in all honesty, this will probably work out fine. The Euro pound will probably be one of those trades where we're like, man, I wish I'd done that. But again, I think it's more important, even though there's a huge possibility to make money on this trade right now. Like I'm, I look at this and I'm like, oh, I want to take that trade. But I think it's super important, important to, um, uh, to keep our strategy rules over everything, right? Over everything. Um, so, yeah, just due to the recency on that pound news, I'm going to stay away from it. All right. And then, then yeah, so I'm, ba I'm basically just waiting for that dollar franc to see if it can make another high today. Um, I don't know if I would like to buy it, if it broke lower, um, that's a thought, right? I really like where everything is at on the sell side of this pair, um, especially if it broke higher. If it broke higher, I would love to sell it. But the way these recent candlesticks are forming, it looks like it wants to break lower now but it's again it wouldn't quite fit our criteria to sell right now We got 20 minutes left, 20 minutes left for an opportunity, another opportunity to line up. And if, if nothing lines up, then we just carry the, these last two trades, you know, we've got the stop losses in, we've got the targets in, we just let them run their course. But yeah, I obviously am trying to find another one before we go.
The euro dollar could turn into a buy within 20 minutes. Because in all honesty, this hasn't really had a banker's close opportunity today. I mean, other than you could have bought 30 minutes early or sold 30 minutes early. But I mean, I think that's pushing the rules a little too much. Um, a lot of people trade these bankers close differently. I've seen people on YouTube. Um, I don't know how good they are, though. I've seen some people trade these closes, you know, two hours early. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like the last hour. I'll, the reason why I like that last hour, the one that we're in right now, is because the volatility is going to be lower. Um, so if there's going to be a market move that sends the market higher or lower and we get stuck in that trade, there's a good chance that whatever was created in that last hour will pull back. I, I talked yesterday about how it's just kind of like trimming the fat. Um, that fat is likely to be trimmed on whatever happens in that last hour. But um, if there's stuff that happens, you know, two hours before the close, that might be a move that was necessary, that, that the, the market merits. And so if we try to uh, beat that trade, so, you know, and try to say, well, um, um, you know, if we're trying to beat that trade, then I don't, I don't think it's going to work out necessarily if, if you're going to trade two hours early. So I like what we have. I really like the system that we're in. Um, and the and the way we trade our rules and things like that. All right, so this one we'll see we'll see if it lines up. It needs to we need to see a, a drop in the euro dollar here soon. I'm actually going to put this on my other chart over here as well because um, this could line up. This could definitely line up here. And we want to be ready because that could be a fun trade to grab. Okay, and then uh, the dollar franc is actually looking a little bit better. So that makes me happy. Right. Just made a little bit of a pump up, a little pump to the upside. Um, we need it to double or triple that for us to feel good about entering though. So let's see how far that can go. Let's see, a short on this pair would be equivalent to buying the Euro dollar. So both the Euro dollar franc and Euro dollar, in my opinion, are very similar in the way that they trade. Um, so, so yeah, if the euro dollar lines up, then most likely this one would line up. It's just a matter of, you know, which one do you like better? But from what I'm seeing, they, they look like they both want to line up before the, the close. Let's see if we can get it, because I'd love to take one more trade. And, and, and just so you're aware, if you're not comfortable with this, let me know. And, and, you know, you make the decision yourself. But the trade that I'm looking to take would be a carry trade. So... It's, you know, hey, we have an opportunity at the top of the hour, you know, going into the banker's close. Um, and it's just something I want to fade over the next several hours, maybe longer. We'll see. So if you're like, you know, hey, I just wanted to make my money, you know, at the beginning of the hour and we've basically done that already and you're done, then, then I'd call it good there. But we may not get this opportunity. We'll see. Um, as far as I can tell, the volatility is kind of dried up, so we don't have much time to create another high on this pair today.
Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's probably a good one, the Euro Pound. We talked about that. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's it's a good trade. Nice. You're probably up almost 10 pips on some of those already. I'm just being picky, Steve, right? I trying to trying to find exactly what I want. But that's a quick quick scalp. Nice job. Trying to find something that I'd feel comfortable putting a very large position on. Cause I I obviously today we've made money, um, but I didn't know the volatility was going to be this um week and i think um for me i need to put on a bigger especially on the ftmo account i need to put a bigger trade on so that we can because with ftmo i don't know if you're familiar with it you have to obviously the two big rules are you can't lose more than five percent in a day and you cannot have a loss bigger than ten percent great we're doing that but then the other thing you got to do well, there's two other things you got to trade, you know, a certain amount of days in the month. And then the other thing you got to do is you got to make a certain amount of money. And sometimes that's the harder thing to do. Um, because you still, you obviously have to not take too much risk, but you have to be able to make a lot. They're kind of difficult. Uh, yeah. You're very familiar with them. Yeah. Kind of difficult, but you know, we'll get it done. That's part of the reason why I've been staying up later. Uh, is trading trading these Tokyo closes is because I'm trying to get more money through the through the account. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I know you can ask for, they told me that as long as you haven't broken the two cardinal rules, you know, the, the loss rules, um, they'll allow you to um, extend 14 days. So if you need another 14 days to hit your profit target, that they can give that to you. Um, so we'll see if that's necessary, but. Yeah, I feel like FTMO, they, they really only want real elite traders to be trading in their trading their money. And I get why they're doing it, but I also think it's just a business decision. They probably are just looking to get um it's it's a lot of money. This you know, when you slap down it, to get the two hundred thousand dollar account, you have to slap down, you know, fifteen hundred dollars for an opportunity. To, to get access to that, you know, that, and if you don't make it, they keep that $1,500, right? So yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they make quite a bit of money on that side too. In all honesty, it's probably where they make most of their money is on the, on the subscription, right? Not necessarily people getting funded. All right, so yeah, this one's getting close. I really want, I'd love the last two candlesticks to be a break higher because then I feel like I would, I would go ahead and sell into that. Um, the Euro dollar kind of broke up already a little quickly. I was really surprised to see that. Um, so yeah, it didn't really break lower. We need it to puncture through that line for us to feel comfortable buying, but it didn't. So that one's probably off the table. I think the dollar franc is still an option, um, but we need it, you know, it's got two bars left to make another high. So I don't know, we'll see. And then I'm just gonna quickly scan some of these other pairs. 
Um, how did I miss this one? Was I just talking? <laughs> oh no, we're not trading the Aussie. That's why. <laughs> I was like, dang, this would have been a great opportunity to buy right there. But yeah, we're not trading the Aussie today. Nothing there. just happened so fast. Yeah, most of these were right at the beginning of the hour, perhaps even before a lot of these set up pretty fast today. This dollar franc is looking really weak because its counterparts are doing better. Um, like the dollar yen is actually making new highs right now, right? It's actually going up and making those highs. Whereas this guy um, is just um, weak and staying here. So, it just further validates the fact that this is a weaker currency and most likely will come down. Like I, I'm just tempted to just trade it anyway, even though it's not there, but I really, I really would love for it to make another, you know, attempt higher here at the end of the hour. If it did, I, I would go ahead and grab some sales on that for sure. I would like, you know, something where it, you know, came up to here or this line right here, that would be ideal. I don't think it'll get there at this point, but yeah, I, that's all free money. If you, if you sell at any of those levels, in my opinion, that's just free money. Like you're leaving money on the table if you don't take that trade. And then, and then you look at, and you go back in time and you look at where, where the market was, you know, a week ago. And yeah, it's sure, sure it could go up to this level right here, but all of this is gonna be extremely profitable at the end of the day. And let's go take a look at our Euro franc trade. So it came back up a little, right, from its low. And now it's just hanging out right here. And that's fine, right? Like, we're just playing with house money at this point, And our stop loss is at break even. So, you know, whatever it wants to do, however it wants to do it, it's fine. Okay, well, I am just looking at some other possibilities before we go, but that's it. Um, I'm thinking most of these opportunities, well, let's see. Um, 
technically the zero franc if it made another high within the next five minutes or so, it would be a repeat opportunity. But you know, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's gonna do that. Um, there's really not a lot of time left. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we just take our profits today and be happy with it. Um, you know, not, not a huge day, definitely a very slow day. Um, still, you know, you can't really complain if you trade in the Forex market and you make money, then you did better than 95% of, you know, 90% of retail traders today. Um, and we do that gosh dang nearly every day. Right. So I, I'd say, you know, that's a win, even though it just wasn't a lot of money made. Um, so, all right. So what we'll do is leave the euro franc to sit, you know, put your stop losses at break even, let those two sit and go. You know, we talked about 30 to 50 pips, just wherever you find the best support areas in that 30 to 50 pip, pip range, go ahead and target that. And then, um, yeah, we'll just look to trade again starting uh, tomorrow. Or oh, actually, we got caught report tonight. If any of you want to come to the caught report, that'll be fun. Um, and then, yeah, we'll trade again tomorrow night so or tomorrow morning. So thanks for coming, guys, and we'll catch you in the next webinar.